Welcome to the Snarky Snippet Interview Edition. Today, the Snarky Snippet interviewed someone that wasn't there. It is my preferred method of conducting interviews as I don't have pesky answers interrupting my flow. Today's absent special guest is Prince Harry. Welcome, Harry. Blink twice when you're ready to begin. Three times if you want rescuing. Right. Omar Scobie claims in his new book Endgame that you are blissfully happy as a result of all the decisions you've made to date. If so, why do you look so miserable all the time? What's that? Yes, you do. All the time. How do you look? Well, uh, it swings between miserable and resentful with flashes of pompous prat. Yes, I know there are photos of you having a great time, Harry, but your pupils seem to be a tad dilated. Oh, oh, a change of light can do that. Oh, well, I guess that explains it. Next question. If your family is as unloving, deceptive and institutionalised as you painted them, why do you want to spend Christmas with them? You accepted an award for exposing institutional racism in the royal family. What's that? Yes, you did. Yes. It was that Ripple of Hope Award thing. Yes. Yes. Racism. Your family. Oh, you didn't know that. Oh, well, it was announced, Harry. Okay, moving on. Your docuseries slammed the Commonwealth. You know, that was your grandmother's entire life's work. Yes, you slammed it in your docuseries as Empire 2.0. Oh, you didn't know that was a bad thing. Oh, well, you need to do a little more research, honey. And you said you had to flee the institution and the UK to protect your family, blah, 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 blah. Explain to me how it makes sense then, accepting royal titles for your children. Oh, and why are you holding on to your titles? Oh, wait. What difference would it make? Well, I guess it would give you the appearance of integrity. I mean, it might make you seem a little more honest. Putting your money where your mouth is, walking the walk, not just talking the talk. I'm I'm the cliche queen, darling. Do you want me to stop? Next question? Okay. It appears since your wife became a part of the family, you've lost, well, everything. All your family relationships have been completely destroyed. You are loathed and distrusted in equal measure. At what point will you consider that Megan might be the problem? And did it concern you that your wife had no family and no friends she really knew to invite to the wedding? I mean, didn't you find that a red flag? And while we're at it, Her discarding of her father and her friends and her dogs. I mean, doesn't it just raise the concern that one day it might be you? Your brother, who's Prince William, by the way, said to you, you should take your time to get to know this girl. And on reflection, you know, just getting the ego out of the way, you know, and the disastrous outcome for everybody concerned. Do you think he had a point? And while we're at it, talking about William, I was thinking about this. And do you think the fact that he's better looking than you and he's way richer than you and he's more successful than you, you know, he's he's better at being a prince than you. Do you think that that might actually feed into your jealousy? Now, I'd like to get on to the Oprah interview because that has caused quite a fracas, as you know. I do have the transcript of the interview in front of me, and I think today, right now, I think we can clean up a lot of misunderstanding. Now, in the Oprah interview, your wife made out that there were conversations about the colour of Archie's skin, and this then resulted in him not being offered security and possibly not being offered a title. Okay, that was the impression everyone, 40 million people all around the world, got from her statement. Now, you then joined the interview, and Oprah asked you when that actually happened. When did that conversation actually happen? And you said that that was a question put to you right at the beginning of your relationship with Megan. And you said the question was, and I quote, what will the kids look like? Plural, kids 
look like. And you said, you actually gave us a timeline, which was very helpful. You said, and I'm paraphrasing now, that it was around the time your family was asking whether Megan would keep on acting. Well, you see, that means it must have predated Megan's announcement of giving up acting in November of 2017. So you see, at that time, thank you, Harry. Thank you, by the way for giving us a clear indication of the timeline of that general question, that she actually wasn't pregnant when the question was asked. You weren't even married when the question was asked. It wasn't about Archie's skin colour, because he wasn't even conceived yet. So from your own words in the Oprah Winfrey interview that are on record, we can see that it was a hypothetical, curious musing about a distant possibility. And you let it be something else. Oh, why do I say that? Oh, because post-interview, darling, the royal family were being accused of being racist and the speculation about who said what, where, when reached fever pitch. And even if it was a construct of the media, which quite frankly was a little gaslight he has, why didn't you step in at that point and issue a clarifying statement? So now years of speculation have turned into actual allegations against two members of your immediate family, and still you say nothing. And you said in an interview that silence was complicity. Shouldn't you lead by example? It appears in this absent interview we have somehow managed to come full circle, Harry. It seems it always comes back to integrity, honour, courage, loyalty. Oh, what's that? How do you get those qualities? Well, you can't buy them, Harry. I guess you'll find them where you left your backbone. Bye. <laughs>